new, 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 Okay. Yeah, um, we have an update. Okay, this is an updated product. This is the Pi Protector, the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 3B+. Plus. The update is now, if you look at here, stop here, you can see, um, oh, you know what, actually, let me show it on the overhead because I have it up, up high three. Okay. So it's hard to see because it's clear. Yeah. So on the overhead, I can show it real fast. Um, we now have this cut out so that it works with the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. You can see there's the little PoE four pin connector. Well, that was in the way before, but now it's not because we have added a cut out. So we have these back in stock and they now work, they back work with all the Raspberry Pi 2B+, you know, any of the ones with the 2x20 connector. Now they even work with the 3B+. Wow, amazing. Pi Protect. All right, next up. We did some of these last week. But we, we did more, yeah. Last week we did the 5-pin one. These are the 3-pin ones. Um, I've gotten better at explaining them. Each one of these connectors with the three um, latches, if you plug three wires in, it basically connects them all together as one. But it's great for high current. It can do like, I think it's like 20 or 30 or 40 amps, uh, you know, hundreds of volts. Um, these are really great quality, like wire nuts. Basically, it's a lot better than trying to solder wires together and then heat shrinking them because it protects them. You just strip the wire, you lift the um, latch up, you put the wire in, you close it. I can show it on the overhead. These are, these are great. These are so popular, especially for people doing, um, because they're very high power. They're very popular for people doing um, LED wiring where you have a lot of LED strips. You have to share the power, share the ground. And people are like, how do I do that? Do I use a breadboard? Well, breadboards, like they're flaky um, and they're not good for loose wires like this. So here um, you can you know, lift all of them up like so. And then um, wires easily get removed and then you can put the wire back in and close it. And so you can do up to three wires on this one and then we also have a set of five so yeah super handy for high power wiring and they're so compact and uh, they're translucent and you can see this is the bus bar this is the part that they all get connected to big chunk of metal so you know it's good all stainless UL okay. listed amazing it says the uh, wire gauge on the side Wago makes great stuff these are high quality all right. the best this is all for the fans out there yeah <laughs> Big fan. All right, we got this fan. Um, that's why the code is trifoil. This is a three-legged, three-armed, I don't know, whatever, three whatevers uh, fan. And it has a two millimeter um, connector and it goes onto, not our TT motors, because they don't spin that fast anyways. They go onto our DC hobby fans. And you know, almost every, um, whoa, a little more space here. Almost every DC motor has a two millimeter um, axle, so these will work really well. And uh, they spin, they blow, and they you, know, you can probably use them as a basic generator too. If you have something windy, it'll yeah. generate electricity as well. It's, they kind of look a little bit like those uh, wind generators. Yeah, this is see. fun. Um, when I was doing the projects for Cricut, um, you could have a, a little bubble wand. Yeah. Turn this on, and it can blow the bubbles. Yeah, it can it can um, yeah. spin air. It can um, yeah, it can like rotate some stuff. I don't know, kind of fun. I mean, we use it for a fan because that's what it looks best at. Yeah. But you could also put it on um, a paddle boat or something. It could probably um, spin some paddles, or um, if it's uh, light enough, it can uh, move air. It's not going to be strong enough for a um, drone, but it's kind of the same idea. There's a fan, yeah. three three legs, trifoil. And uh, okay. let's say you're like, well, I want more things that spin on motors. Yeah, let me uh, show the photos here. You're in luck. We have these. These were in Ada Box 8. These are the um, paddle wheels. So they're, they're paddle wheels. You know, you can use them for moving water. But I'll tell you what I think they're actually great for is they're just, you know, large plastic pieces that attach onto a TT motor. Yeah. This and is good for getting things to move around. And it's just, you get a lot of attachment points. It's like, it's just like you can, you can glue, you can hot glue, you can foam tape, you can zip tie. You have so much surface area. We get um, three different ones. They actually also have a um, two millimeter. They have a, a, a double uh, axle here. So let's see, maybe this fits on the other. 
Yeah, so you can have it also spin on your DC motor, so you can have uh, this kind of high speed. Ooh, it's been, they're nice and balanced too. Just does generate a little bit of wind. Or you can put them on your TT gearbox motors for stronger uh, motion. And you can see it does paddle, it has a little bit of paddling. Not good for um, like robot wheels. Like I guess you could kind of make it into a wheel that rotates like this if you want to pull something along. But we have rubber tire wheels that'll work a lot better. So you get three different sizes. You could also maybe turn these into gears somehow. You know, these are latch parts that stick out, so we could gear something up with them. But some accessories for your TT motors and your DC gearbox motors and your DC motors. Okay. All right, next up. All right, next up. Time for matrix keypads. So we've actually, um, we kinda, I kind of noticed we didn't have these in the store, so I, I went and got some good samples. These are nice quality um, plastic 4x4, four four, and we also have 3x4 matrices. So this is a 4x4, four four, and it's multiplex, so you need eight microcontroller pins. We have Arduino code example, and there's also a CircuitPython this library. Four. And we also have the 3x4. Right. Same idea, except this is more like a normal keypad. It doesn't have the A, B, C, D. And um, really easy to use. You just have to you know, scan the rows and scan the columns and see what's pressed. Um, not meant for like when you press a ton of buttons at once. For that you want like something like a trellis, but good if you just want to enter in numbers, like a, a passcode or um, configuring the speed of something. Got this type. Huh? You got this type or this type? Yeah, two types. Okay. And then on the overhead, I can just I can show them off really quickly. Yeah, um, yeah you got these uh, plastic buttons just like on a keypad. Um, they come with some header. You'll solder it on, or you can solder in wires. Um, this one has seven pins three columns and three columns four rows and this one has eight pins for uh eight pins four columns four rows for the you know one four seven row and then the one two three row and i just got an example code for the feather all it does is you know read the key code and um print it out so you can go press numbers to your heart's content but um, they're really great, and they have little um, mounting nubs, too, if you really want to attach them to a faceplate. So cool if you want to enter in numbers easily. Maybe some letters as well. Okay. Next up. Oh, you got the Chibi scope. We got two Chibi items yeah. uh, from Chibitronics. Chibitronics is a collaboration between um, J. Chi, who's designed some amazing electronics, Benny Wang, who helps her um, with some of the manufacturing. He's an expert at that. And this is the Chibi Scope, and this is, you think it's like, oh, it's a kid's toy, it looks like a Tamagotchi, it's not. This is actually a really powerful um, electronic tool, which you'll probably use even if you're not using uh, the Chibitronics. So, let me show it on the overhead. So it's pretty simple. Um, you've got, oh, sorry. You've got three pads, ground, five volt, and TXT. But TXT text is also just input. So I have it hooked up here to um, powering off of a chibi clip. And then this pin, um, this is like an oscilloscope mode. So if I connect it up to this pin, you can see it's showing me the PWM of that LED. You can watch this white LED. And then you can see the PWM on the oscilloscope, the OLED matches, which is pretty amazing. And it has a bunch of modes. So that's uh, text mode. I don't have something that has a 80, uh, 9600 baud text, but if you do have 86, uh, sorry, 9600 baud text, um, you would get ASCII text uh, printed out here. And then you have volt mode, which is kind of what you think. It's a, it's like a multimeter, so it'll um, take the average voltage. So you've got multimeter, oscilloscope, and text display all in one, and then you just press this button um, to change which mode you want. So this is a really handy tool um, in a really nice plastic case with this button. So I think it's it's just useful for anybody who uh, wants to do projects where they want to debug it, but maybe they don't need a full oscilloscope. For the price, you get uh, quite a lot, and it's a, a 1.3 inch OLED, 128 by 64 uh, pixels, and yeah, you just alligator clip it on, and and you're golden. So a great debugging tool uh, for beginners or for experts. This is handy. Very handy. Pocketable. Yeah, it's it's like so round and friendly. Yeah. Okay. Next up from Chibi. That's right. 
we've got this starter kit. So if you've heard about Chibitronics and you want to play with, uh, you know, this clip that you can program with MakeCode with your mobile phone and you can make LEDs blink, um, there's also sensor inputs, and you want to uh, follow along with Fern the Frog uh, through the storybook, um, we now have a pack that gets you um, the book that teaches you all about programming in a really friendly, fun way. It's a very um, child-friendly, a young person could follow along. You get the chibi chip, which you can clip onto the pages, and there's um, some projects where you clip it on and then you put copper tape down um, to uh, build the project. And then you also get some copper tape and uh, 36 LEDs. So you get a ton in this book, and it's everything you need. You don't need anything else. You've got the full kit. So I know we've got all the little individual pieces. You know, we've got just the clip, just the chip, just the copper tape, just the LEDs. But if you want to give a gift for somebody, I think this will be very popular for the holidays um, or, you know, for back to school. This is everything you need, and it's it's specifically designed for young kids or people who are, you know, they want to learn programming and they're, they want something easy, um, something that's simple with drag and drop block programming. So uh, somebody who, a kid who has experience with Scratch or is learning Scratch will also like to use the Love to Code. So check out, we have a whole range of the Chibitronics uh, products. This is just the all-in-one starter kit. Okay, and the start of the show tonight besides our community and Uli data is this. This is a yeah, mega update. This is a mega update. It's an updated project, but it's so updated that I figure it's it's a new product. This is product 802, so it's quite an old one. Yeah. Um, this is a 1.8 inch TFT shield. Turned out that the joystick we were using got discontinued. Got to the old one. Um, and since it, the old uh, photo, uh, the old joystick got discontinued, we're like, well, you know what? Let's just redesign the whole thing. So we added three buttons, um, A, B, C at the bottom. We have a new bigger joystick. We made it um, R3 compatible, so now it works with the Arduino Mega and Zero and Due and all that good stuff. And we also stuck a seesaw chip on there to handle the backlight and the buttons. There's eight buttons all together, the five-way navigation switch and three tactile buttons. So that's all handled over I squared C with seesaw which means that um, you only need, you know, four or five pins total plus I squared C to have a full user interface um, with a TFT screen. So I thought I can show this off on the overhead. So yeah, this is actually showing it on a um, Metro M4. That's my favorite new uh, Metro. Um, so you've got this uh, joystick and this demo as I move it up, down, left, right, and select. You see it detects it. It does all that over I squared C, so you don't have to use individual pins for those buttons. And then down here we have um, A, B, and C buttons. And this code, when it's done, it will read from the SD card and display a picture of Adabot. So this now works with all the different Arduinos. It's the same screen, but a newer, easier to use joystick and three buttons and seesaw. Same price, but it, you get much, much more, and it's, I think, a, a much better shield that will um, we'll be able to get it working in CircuitPython um, as well as Arduino, and we'll work with all Arduino compatibles, whereas the previous version we had only worked with the Uno and the Metro 328. So a big upgrade for this um, adorable little shield. Gives you a, a nice 1.8-inch color screen and a full user interface you can play around with. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, those are new products. Yay! We had so much new.